I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. Today I'm going to talk about photography contests. I'm going to talk about the good, I'm going to talk about the bad, and I'm going to talk about the ugly. So if you're interested in photography contests, if you've entered them in the past, or if you're considering entering them in the future, watch this episode first. As always, guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. It is the season of giving. It is the holiday season, so you could give gift cards. I've got those available on my online store. I've also got my sessions. You can gift those, or if you want to gift a preset, or if you want to gift a print. I've got selected sizes of some of my most popular prints at $25 off, and starting as low as $99 with free shipping worldwide. So check all that out at justinmott.com. Dot com. And also guys, don't forget to check out my weekly assignment challenge every single week. It's a free photography contest. I announce a theme every Friday night on YouTube and on Instagram. You have until Wednesday to complete the assignment. And if you win, you're automatically entered into the year end photo of the year contest with a spectacular prize by my friends over at Wotencraft for a Wotencraft pilot series bag. If you want to learn more about their bags, more about the prize, check out the affiliate link in the description box below. So before I get into the good, the bad, and the ugly, most of what I'm going to talk about, most of the reference I'm going to make are from competitions that I've entered and those tend to be more like photojournalism competitions like World Press Photo and Photographer of the Year International and, and things like that. But a lot of what I'm going to talk about today really pertains to all genres of photography. So let's start with the good. So for like a prestigious award, let's say in the photojournalism world, the World Press Photo, let's start with that. So if you were to enter World Press Photo and you were to win or place, it's a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing to have on your bio. It's a good thing to be part of such a historic collection of images. It can't hurt for your legacy. It can't hurt for the story that you want to put out there. Hopefully you're not doing these competitions for you, especially if you're a photojournalist, you should be doing it to get these stories out there, to get seen by more people. And being part of a collection like World Press Photo, you will get your story out there. I mean, people will see it. They do exhibitions, they promote it, they have a budget to promote such things. And it's a free competition. Well, at least it was through the years that I've been it, but I don't know what it's like now because I haven't entered many contests. You know, most of the actual prestigious competitions don't cost anything. That's actually a good measuring stick right there. If they cost a lot of money, they're probably not that. I mean, yes, there's some that cost money and are prestigious, but most of the competitions, especially in the journalism world, are free. You know, because you want to have fair access to everyone to enter. And there is plenty of bad about the World Press Photo, which I'm not going to get into here because it's like a whole separate episode, but just some things off of the top of my head. There's been people in the past that have actually like faked images or exaggerated captions or just flat out lied about their work or done too much post-production. I also will say if I'm going to if I'm going to vent a little bit about World Press Photo, it tends to promote their own. Like, you know, judges tend to gravitate towards other people's work. Like, yes, the work's supposed to be anonymous, but, you know, this judge definitely knows that that person's work was published in this magazine and they know that work already leading into the competition before they even judge the images. Even though their name's not attached, they know this person shot it. It also tends to be a little bit unfair. Like I've noticed like some photographers that are bigger names for bigger agencies or work for bigger magazines tend to get away with a lot more post-production than like your average newbie would. Or someone that's a little bit more unknown probably can't get away with as much. There's also been a lot of different scandals about toning, about just ethics in general. I also feel like the competition sort of promotes the same type of work every year. So like this type of work, this type of toning won this year, or this type of story told this way won this past year, and then it sort of like feeds everyone to do the same thing next year. And maybe it has changed, I don't know. I haven't really been involved. I used to be so like involved in that industry, in that, that world of like world press photo and documentary photography and photojournalists, but you know, I, I sort of remove myself from it. I don't really want to be part of that world. It's really, really petty. It tends to be a lot more about the photographer, and not everyone, but I've just seen too much of it to like fully put myself into that world. Now I just dabble. I just sort of pop in, say hi, and then I go off in a different direction. And I'm much happier for that. Like when I go do a story, I don't care if my work ends up there. That's not the ultimate goal. If you're in the commercial photography world or the wedding world to get your work out there, to put it on your bio, to put it on your website, and just create more buzz about who you are in your business, that's fantastic because it's a very competitive world. All photography genres, all the markets are completely saturated and very, very competitive. So anything you can do to get your name out there, sure, it helps, you know, it, it just does. So yes, if I do have a story that I think is worthy of winning the competition, and yeah, I might enter it because that's just another outlet to get the story out, more eyeballs on it, more awareness about the story that I'm trying to tell. It's a good way to get your work in front of industry leaders or editors you want to work for. That's another little thing I should mention. Like, don't enter competitions because the judges are photographers you admire. Photographers tend to like look out for themselves. They're not hiring other photographers. They're not giving you their work. Look for judges that are editors and editors that you admire or work for publications or art buyers that you admire. Like, look for that because that's like going to lead to work. Photographers aren't going to lead 
to work at all. Trust me, they're just not, they're selfish. Now let's talk about the bad. Well, the cost. I mean, these photography contests are popping up every single day. Like my email is like flooded with spam. Like I even try to unsubscribe and they just don't let me. I get like emails for competitions I never signed up for, is never a part of. They must just like troll and go online and find photographers and they, and they prey on you. They prey on that like desire for photographers to get attention and to win. And the cost can add up. I mean, you can spend thousands of dollars on these competitions. There's something every single quarter. There's something for every type of photography. When I was in college, I was lucky enough to have a professor and fellow students that like, could like teach each other and educate each other about which competitions were kind of worthy, which ones were worth it to enter, and which ones weren't. So when I was in school, one of the big ones was College Photographer of the Year. Then we had some local and regional stuff. And then we also had PDN, Photo District News. And they did one called the PDN Annual. And within that annual competition, they, they had a grant for pro and for amateur for a humanistic photographer of the year. And I actually won that for my story on victims from Agent Orange. So that was very helpful. That was a cash prize. That was nice. I think it was a couple thousand dollars. I was just leaving school. So that was actually very, very helpful to me to have that because I, ha I didn't have any jobs at the time. So it was a nice way to get my name out there. It was a nice way to get my story out there as well because that's now part of their historic like archive. So, you know, that, that was a nice thing to win. But then I noticed the PDN annual extended into like all these other things. Like it just became like a cash cow for them and not really blaming them because they probably made a ton of money out of it. But they, the contest just became like ridiculous. Like PDN also had like portraits and they had like just, oh, faces. And then they had like details of faces and they had like hands and they had like hands on faces. Then it was like feet. No, I mean, they didn't have that many, but it just, it just became like crazy. It was just like two, they were just like making up genres. They were just making up categories just because like they're playing on our, they're just playing on our narcissism as photographers. Like we want to get our work out there. We want to win. So, and it was expensive. Like it's like $25 an entry or like $35 an entry or do a bundle for a hundred dollars. And you could just easily spend like a few hundred dollars just on that, just on their competition. Never mind all the other ones out there. So it's important that throughout the year that you come up with a budget, like come up with a basic budget on what you think you should spend on contests. You should look at the contests that actually have some merit, that actually have some clout. Look for the judges, look for the publications or look for the brands behind them that you respect, that you admire, and then make a decision. Like, and then also look internally at your work. Like not every year you're gonna have work that's worthy of entering a competition. So look at the past winners. I'm not saying like, like don't be proud of your work and don't get out there, but if it really doesn't stack up, like be honest with yourself. Take a long, hard look at your work. If it doesn't stack up, don't enter the competition. Don't give up, don't get discouraged, but like use that to push you to do a better story or to work more on the story that you thought you were ready to submit. In addition to that, pay attention to the fine print and the prizes. I mean, all of them lead big, right? They leave like up to $10,000 in prizes. And then you read the fine print and like, yeah, photo of the year wins $9,000. The other 30 different categories they have and then first, second, and third, and then 12 honorable mentions they get like nothing, right? You get like nothing. You even get your money back. Like that's another thing that's kind of weird. Like I've actually placed in some pretty big competitions. I'm not gonna go through the list, but no, like I don't, I'm very selective about the work that I enter and the competition that I enter, but I've placed in some pretty big competitions and just won nothing. I've won first in a category and won nothing. Like not even your own money back for your entry fee. Like these competitions really do prey on us. And we really should as an industry clean that up a bit and then they way overvalue the prizes you know it's like a camera that's outdated or gift certificates or like a gift bundle or like if you spend nine hundred dollars at Adorama you get a hundred dollars off so they count that on like it's a lot of stupid stuff like that so read the fine print come up with a budget be selective about the work that you enter be selective about the competitions that you enter as well now let's get to the ugly the part you're probably here for and the ugly is what it can do to us as individuals what it can do to us as fragile photographers or narcissistic or egotistical photographers it can bring out the best in people it can also bring out the worst in people and winning can really go to people's head and losing can really discourage people that shouldn't be discouraged because there's so many things that go into judging of a photography competition. There's agendas, there's sponsors, and it's just subjective. I mean, that, that's the whole thing. So you shouldn't be discouraged. So I've seen the worst side. I've seen people win World Press Photo. I've seen people win big competitions and it makes them lazy after that. They think, well, I've won this. That's the top. I don't need to get any better. And you don't see them do a story for like another few years. And you see them turn down work because they're above it. You see them, they automatically think they're like a tier above their peers. They think they're better. And you're not. Just from winning a competition, you're, you're not better than everyone else. That story might have been great that year, but it doesn't make you overall a better photographer. And it shouldn't make you difficult to deal with. And it shouldn't make you lazy. It should push you more. But also, 
The downside is I also see it push people too far. They get addicted to winning and that's their new normal. That's the new standard. And while it's good to push for that, I've seen it push people too far. That's when people start chasing these competitions and they start to define themselves by how many of these competitions they won. And it really can lead to people making some shady ethical decisions because you want that win again. You want it once or you finish second, you want to finish first or you know, you got addicted to winning and all that attention that you got. Not only can it lead to like bad ethical decisions like setting up shots for a journalistic competition or exaggerating captions or removing things from a picture that we're taking for like a journalism magazine or like world press photo you're submitting and you've actually like cloned something out or cloned something in. Steve McCurry, still haven't talked about that whole issue yet, but at some point I'd like to get into it. But yeah, you can chase the dragon. You get used to that. Like you wanna be up at that high level. You wanna get all that credit for your work. You wanna be in World Press Photo or whatever prestigious competition is within your world and it, it can weigh on you and it can lead to people making really bad decisions. And even in like the journalistic world, it can lead to people, and this I see all the time, it can lead to people caring more about themselves and about the awards and about the recognition than they actually do about the story. It's not really uncommon. In fact, it's actually probably more common than not. And that's really a shame because if you ask a lot of people when they started with their photography, it's probably not where they get into it. Some, yeah, maybe some were doing it because they just wanted attention and things like that. But a lot of them probably did have genuine intentions. And I've seen it kind of spiral out of control. So just be wary of that. And then the flip side of that is like not winning. I see people really get discouraged, really get down, really beat themselves up. They kind of go into a downward spiral the other way. And that can also lead to making unethical decisions. And it's like doping and cycling, right? It's like the other, the winners did it, right? They did it last year and I can't compete with them unless I do, unless, unless I make my picture perfect, unless I clone that out, unless I go that extra level with my toning or exaggerate about my caption or exaggerate about the story idea or make stuff up or even just flat out lie. It can lead to that. So just be careful of that. Don't chase the competition. Don't let it turn into an unethical, a doping photographer. Don't. And don't let it weigh you down. Don't pin your self-worth. Don't pin your value. Don't pin your skills as a photographer to it. Always strive to get better. Again, every single contest, as much as they say they don't, they have their agendas. They have their different biases. They have different judges that are looking for different things every year. So just try not to stress about it. Don't go into the terrible zone. Try to stay into the good zone. So those are my thoughts on photography competitions. I'm not trying to discourage people from entering competitions at all. And I'm not trying to minimize people that have won some of these big competitions that I've talked about. A lot of them deserve to win and there's nothing against entering. I've entered competitions throughout my entire career. Some of my work I've entered and I thought never had a chance to win and has won some work that I thought maybe could win. Didn't place at all, it didn't win anything, no honorable mention. And that's fine. Just don't hang yourself worth to it as a photographer. Don't let it define you as a photographer. Be selective about which work you enter into competitions and be selective about which competitions you enter. So those are my thoughts on photography competitions. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Let me know your experiences in photography competitions and any advice that you might have for other people watching this channel and reading the comments section. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, don't forget to have a wonderful day.